USCHO.com. This is the USCHO Spotlight, a weekly podcast from U.S. College Hockey Online at USCHO.com, featuring conversations with college hockey coaches and players and journalists who cover the sport. Welcome to USCHO Spotlight for Thursday, March 17th, 2022. I'm Ben Trefsker alongside Jim Connolly. This podcast is brought to you by DCU Digital Federal Credit Union. What will DCU mean to you? Find out today by visiting dcu.org. Membership required. Well, Jim, it's time to turn to the Hobie Baker Award. And on Wednesday, the 10 finalists for 2022 were announced. Let me go through the list. And I'm going to ask you first if there are any that are missing from this list you thought would be on there. So in alphabetical order, Maddie Beniers from uh, Michigan, Bobby Brink from Denver, Michigan Tech's Brian Hallinan, Luke Hughes from Michigan, Devin Levi from Northeastern, uh, Minnesota State's Dryden McKay, uh, Minnesota's Ben Myers, Yanni Peretz from Quinnipiac, Nathan Smith from Minnesota State, and Bobby Trevino from UMass. So, Jim, uh, we were talking before we sat down, and we thought it was a pretty good list, but there are a couple of players who were surprised by their absence. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'll start with Owen Power, and I know the points aren't there to justify Power. You know, the number one draft pick in last year's draft. He came in as a freshman. I thought he was phenomenal. You know, he looks he looks the role. He'll play the role, and he probably is only at Michigan this year, and he's gone. Um, is that a miss? No, not not at all. Um, I look at Julian Napravnik from Minnesota State, and you see Nathan Smith did make the list, and I think you had to probably – Choose one of two Minnesota State guys, you know, because when you add Dryden McKay to the mix, there was no way one team was getting three in the top 10. Um, so those two maybe aren't that painful to leave off. I look at Owen Sillinger at, at Bemidji State and what he did this year. And I, you know, he was one of the top, uh, by my memory, top five in points per game. And that's a really good player. Uh, I'm sorry, he was seventh in points per game, but right there. <clears throat> um same thing for Hank Crone at Northern Michigan, you know, tied for third in points per game. Both of those guys I thought could have been on the list. And the guy, we talked about him in, in length, at length on Monday with Derek Schooley, uh, Jack McBain from Boston College. And this was probably one of the best players in the country this year. The, his problem was he missed games for the Olympics and he missed games for injury. Only ended up playing 24 games, but scored 19 goals in 24 games. I know it's very difficult to kind of overlook um, that type of performance, but at the same time, it's hard to recognize it too because of the sample size was really missing. I believe Boston college played 36 games this year because of the icebreaker. So, you know, you're talking about a guy with playoffs, 38 games, basically missed 14 games. That's a lot to, to have to miss. So I kind of understand it, but it's still tough. And then Aiden McDonough at Northeastern was kind of my last guy that I had in the list that could have made it in, maybe did not, was not as prolific point scoring. And there were more guys. Kent Johnson at, at Michigan had a good year. I see Aiden McDonough enough to know that he was definitely in that, that category. He probably should have been somewhere in there. Didn't work out, but, you know, there there were some good guys on this list, really good guys. I mean, the top 10 impresses me, but I do think that there were certainly some people left off that could have been on this list as well. Well, and when you have three goalies on there, that limits the number of uh, skaters that can be in there. And you could not leave any of those three goaltenders off, and we'll get to them in a little bit. Well, let's talk about some of these players. Uh, let's go by position. Let's start with forwards, and we'll hit them up each in alphabetical order. Let's start with a guy who was no surprise to be on this list. Michigan's Matty Beniers, uh, 19 goals, 21 assists for 40 points in 33 games, 14 of his games, multiple point games. He was on team USA at the Olympics. Uh, he was the first draft pick ever second overall for the Seattle Kraken 10 power play goals makes him fourth in the nation. Uh, he started out great last year as a freshman and has not stopped since. Yeah, you know, I think that we talked about uh, Maddie a little bit on Monday when we were talking with Derek Schooley, and he said, don't be surprised to see the Olympics impacted. And I think if there was one player, maybe Nathan Smith goes in this category too, but one player who was really impacted by the Olympics, it was probably Maddie Beneers. You know, his numbers are great. You know, 10th, I'm sorry, 12th in the country in, in points per game. 
uh, 40 points in 33 games. He had all the numbers. He's so skilled. Everybody knows that who he is and where he is. And he, again, another guy that probably won't be there next season. Um, but I look at, you know, Beneers and what he did at the Olympics was really a prolific part of that team USA that was undefeated in the uh, preliminary round, unfortunately lost their first game in the medal round, but you know, he was a good player. And I think that people understand that he is probably one of the top players this year on the ice. And I, I'm glad to see get him get recognized because it's so easy to say, Oh, he only had 40 points on the season. Not a great season. Um, you know, when you have guys with 48, 44, you know, you know, it's all in that high forties range. You have Brink with 55. I mean, those are good numbers. Um, but 40 points in 33 games, that's pretty impressive as well. Speaking of Bobby Brink, the lone nominee from the NCHC is somebody that DU fans have been pumping the tires of and people have been talking about since before the season started as somebody for the Hobie. Uh, he's leading the nation in a whole bunch of categories, points, assists, He's averaging more than one and a half points a game. Uh, and uh, he has, I know some people into the uh, more sophisticated analytics will poo poo plus minus, but a plus 25 is a pretty good indicator of something too. Uh, he's a second round draft pick of the Philadelphia Flyers. And uh, boy, I'll tell you what, odds have got to be pretty high on him being one of the hat trick. I love his, his stat on block shots you know, 12 block shots for a forward, you know, you, you don't see that that often that, you know, many of these forwards that don't do a ton of pen, penalty killing. I don't know if he does or not, but that's a pretty nice tally on block shots. And, you know, I think that everything he does, he's got a pretty well-rounded game, five, five power play goals. He's got a shorty, you know, 111 shots on goal. This is a kid that he's pretty complete. And when I look at in terms of scores this year, and I have been saying for a long time, this feels like the year of the goaltender, and I don't know where my vote will go next week. Um, but I do say that this is a really uh, impressive forward. And, you know, when I look at who is out there in this forward category, he might be the most impressive player. He's not playing weak competition. Every game they play in that NCHC is very tough. Um, I just look at his schedule and the fact that he put up still 55 points in 35, 36 games for Denver, that's that's a really impressive uh, run line. I, I would take that any day, and I'll tell you, he should be one of the favorites for this award. From Michigan Tech in the CCHA, Brian Hallen in the senior has 21 goals, 23 assists for 44 points in the 36 games he's played. Had 11-game point streak during the season. And uh, the folks at the Hobie Baker Award were happy to pass along a couple of trivia items about him. He was a uh, high school teammate with fellow Hobie Top Ten finalist Ben Myers from Minnesota. And he has 10 siblings. <laughs> I guess what a random thing to throw along. But, you know, I, I guess maybe he was one name that I was not thinking about um, at the top of my list. And that's no disrespect to his season or, or to Michigan Tech. Um, I think that, you know, what he accomplished is good. They're going to go to the NCAA tournament and he'll have a chance to, you know, shine on one of the biggest stages. Um, gets a lot of shots off, 132 shots this season. Uh, plus minus of plus 21. Very solid. Good center. Good faceoff guy. He's over 50, 50%, 50, almost 55% in faceoffs. That's a really good stat as well. I know that that's, you know, most mostly underappreciated, I think, among um, college hockey stats. I think of, you know, anybody that's a good center is, you know, wins a lot of favor in my book, but, you know, I, when I look at his numbers now, I, I kind of re-examine now that he's actually been selected. He wasn't somebody when we were talking on Monday that I was thinking of, but solid. Um, everything is solid. When you put those numbers up against anybody else, I, I like those numbers and, um, I don't think he's probably a Hobie hat trick guy, but he's somebody that certainly was deserving of a, of a top 10 vote. Next on the list of forwards is Ben Myers. Uh, we mentioned him before uh, high school teammate of Hallen. And he uh, was big 10 player of the year as one of the captains of the golden Gophers and, and a big part of their success this season, uh, uh, really described as a 200 foot player, 36 points in 30 games. 
58.4% on faceoffs is phenomenal. You love that on a team and has had 11 multiple point games this season. I think the Big Ten player of the year almost required he be on this top 10 list. Um, tough league to play in. Some really great competition, really great players. And he's shown that he is one of the best. And I, I saw him, I think, down the stretch in the season perform better. Um, every game he seemed to improve. And I think that that's one of those signs. He's a big game player. He's a guy that I think that Bobby Mosco can probably depend on here in the postseason to do what he needs him to do. And I think that's something that goes, you mentioned the face-offs. I mean, that's a really good face-off statistic. 306 wins, only 218 face-off losses. I'd take that any day if I was a coach and a, a plus minus of plus 16. You know, he's got the, he's got all the numbers. Um, and he obviously was recognized by the coaches in the Big Ten, a league that we know has a ton of talent, probably more talent, more highly touted talent than any league in the nation. And I think that, you know, the fact that he got there as um, a forward that maybe was kind of overlooked at times this year and became player of the year in that league, he stood out to most of the coaches. And of course, Team USA at the Olympics doesn't hurt either, as we mentioned before. From Minnesota State, Nathan Smith, a junior uh, with 48 points in 33 games. Uh, again, a great faceoff percentage, 57.7%, and also a representative at the Beijing Olympics, uh, fourth in the nation with 30 assists. He has been one of those guys that has been on my radar all season. Just his numbers, sheer numbers, you know, to have you know 48 points in 33 games. Um, a really good face hour percentage of plus minus of plus 26. I mean, that's a really strong plus minus. There's not too many guys. I think his, his line mate, Julian Dubrovnik at plus 34 might be one of the few guys that you can say is, is better than him in the country. There's not a lot of guys up in that, that hemisphere. Um, I like him. I, again, another guy, I don't think he's around next year, um, but he's talented. And, you know, if it's not, if, you, if you're going to look at an offensive player for the Hobie and it's not Brink, this is the guy for me, Nathan Smith. His, his numbers are phenomenal. I know that people sometimes are saying the CCHA is not the league. It's not as tough. He plays too many easy opponents. I don't agree with that. Um, I'm much more of the mindset of put up your points against whoever you play. These schedules, no matter who you're playing these days, are really tough. So I'm impressed by Nathan Smith's numbers. And again, a guy that you got to see go and play on the biggest stage at the Olympics, and he did not look lost. He looked like he fit in and was actually one of the best players on Team USA. And then the final forward on our list, uh, a guy who was the most outstanding player at last year's Frozen Four, Bobby Trevino from UMass. He's one of these guys that if you're a UMass fan, you just love him to death. If you have to play against him, he kind of gets under your skin. He's kind of feisty and just uh, uh, engine running at like 6,000 RPM the whole time. 18 goals, 27 assists for 45 points in 34 games. 13 of those games, he's had more than one point. I love Trevino. The fact that he was player of the year in Hockey East um, in a league that had a couple of great goaltenders. Um you know, I mentioned McBain already, who was phenomenal, but missed a lot of the season. Um, Trevino showed it every night, 34 games, 45 points, 18 goals, a plus minus of plus 21. Uh, he just, he knows how to do it, you know, and, and he, he does. I think he, you said it right, Ed, he can agitate. And I think that, you know, if you have him on your team, you love him. Um, he's, he's a pain in the neck, though. He's one of those players that you just, you don't know what you're going to get uh, if you're the opponent. But I know I, I can tell you the guy that knows who he's, what he's going to get every night is Greg Carville. And he says that this kid works hard. He's the hardest working player he has on his team. He seems to just try to get better every day. And when you're that good and you're still trying to get better, um, I, I love him. I think I would love to have three Bobby Trevino's on my team every year and you would be the best team in college hockey. Um, I don't know that he'll get the recognition he deserves in the Hobie vote. Um, I, as a voter, I'll, he'll probably get one of my votes. I think we get five and I think he'll get one of them because he really is a guy that stands out. There's nobody 
in this league in the forward position that stands out and can be such a pain in the neck, but also talented and working hard. I love this kid and everything he does. He doesn't, he's not a big guy. He rosters at five, nine, but he's strong and he seems to be built for today's NHL. And I know there's going to be some free agency calling on him as soon as his season is over this year. I think so. You know, I mean, that's, that's just reality. You know, he's been very watched throughout this season. Um, It's a size thing, right? You know, sometimes size matters in the NHL, but I think he'll have, he'll have a pro career. He's, he's got too much talent at this point. We've got goalies and a defenseman to look at when we return. This podcast is brought to you by DCU Digital Federal Credit Union. Visit dcu.org. This is the USCHO Game of the Week podcast from U.S. College Hockey Online. Know how people say life happens? Well, for me, life was happening, and I needed a new truck. I didn't have time to shop around for a good loan, so I got one from the dealer, higher interest and all. Month after month, those payments were squeezing me. So I went to DCU. They refinanced my loan and helped lower my rate, which lowered my payments. These days, I have more money in my pocket for whatever life throws at me. What will DCU mean to you? Insured by NCUA. Membership required. Visit dcu.org. We're back with USCHO Spotlight looking at the top 10, the finalists for the Hobie Baker Award. We talked about forwards. Jim, let's talk about the goalies. These three goaltenders, no doubt, are going to be right up there in the Richter consideration. I wouldn't be surprised if these are the three top guys for the Mike Richter Award. Let's start with Devin Levi from Northeastern University. 21-8-1 this season so far. A goals against of 1.47. That's third in the nation. Save percentage of 954. First in the nation. Second in the nation with 10 shutouts. And he's allowed two goals or fewer in 24 of the 30 games played this season. I, I think he's phenomenal. And I got to call his game last Saturday night against Boston College. And he had to be great. Uh, BC brought it all down the stretch. I think they had 23 shots in the third period. He was under uh, pure attack and he, I think he did let in two, but still ended up being a, a three, two victory for Northeastern. He, he saves the shots he's supposed to save. And then it's what happens around him. Is there a deflection? Is there a big rebound? He doesn't let up a lot of big rebounds, you know, factor that in. Um, but his numbers are great. You look at his saves. He has, 885 saves this season, uh, you know, to put that in perspective, the other two goalies we're going to talk about Yanni Peretz has 471. So let's say almost half. He's only played three games less than Levi. And then Dryden McKay has played eight games more than Levi. And he has 667 saves, almost more than 200 saves less. Devin Levi has seen a lot of puck this season. And he stops a lot of puck, a 1.47 goals against 10 shutouts, 954 save percentage. Phenomenal. This kid is more than I expected. We heard a lot about him last year um, as a freshman, but we never saw him play. He went to the world junior team. Uh, He got injured while he was there. And then we never saw him after that in the second half. He ended up out for the being out for the season. Um, Then he comes in this year as kind of a, an experienced freshman, if you will. And he has been phenomenal. Um, those numbers cannot lie. I mean, he, his save percentage and just the amount of pucks he's seen thrown at him. I think if we have to look at these three goaltenders, he probably is at the top of my list. Um, all three of them are phenomenal. I wasn't surprised to three, see three goalies in the uh, top 10 of the Hobie, but he's just phenomenal. Dryden McKay in Minnesota State. It's his third great year as a top 10 Hobie Baker finalist. 34-4-0 uh, record this season. Uh, goals against of 1.28, second in the country. 9.33 save percentage tied for fourth. Nine shutouts, third in the country. In his career, he's played all but 10 games for Minnesota State. 129 out of 139. Two goals are fewer in 32 of the 38 games played this season. He seemed like he was overlooked a little bit, both for the Richter, although LaFontaine certainly deserved it. Yeah, these are numbers. And, you know, 33 career shutouts, best Ryan Miller's mark. We've talked about Ryan Miller numbers. He's had them his whole career. 
He has. And I think it's, it, it, this might be one, my one difficulty as a Holby voter, uh, as a Richter voter, um, because his numbers are really good this year. And his numbers were really, really good last year. I think I voted for him for Richter last year. Um, this year, I'm going to have a hard time voting for him because believe it or not, people were better. And that's just a bad break. I think that every year that Dryden McKay has played at Minnesota state, he has been one of the best goaltenders in the country. Has he ever been the best? I think last year he was, and I'm not, you know, no disrespect to LaFontaine from Minnesota, but I, I just thought that he was better. And I think, you know, he deserved a little bit more recognition than he got last year. Um, all that said, this year, his numbers are great. And he they got better as the season went on. He's going to finish with nine shutouts. And you mentioned his career shutout mark in the NCAA. You know, a 9.33 save percentage right now. He's only had to stop 667 shots this year. Not anywhere near what Devin Levi has. Not anywhere near even where, you know, uh, Jacob Dodds, did at Ohio state. He's at a thousand eighty six shots that he had to save this year. Think about that. Um, I just look at, this is one of those tragic situations in college sports. I don't think he will win either the Richter or the Hovey Baker. He might get to the top three in both. And that wouldn't be the first time, uh, you know, and it's, it's, it's hard to see a kid play that well and not get the national recognition, but I just don't see it for McKay right now. It's so close, so close. So many times, I think last year, Richter should have been his, but he just misses everything by a little bit every year. The third goalie among the top 10, Yanni Peretz at Quinnipiac, just an incredible season, leading the country with a 0.89 goals against in 26 starts. Uh, Save percentage was second in the nation, 952, led the country with 11 shutouts, set an ECAC hockey record going 100 or 369 consecutive minutes without allowing a goal and only gave up more than two, two or more goals in two of the 26 starts. Just an incredible season. And that's in 26 games because he split some of the time with a goalie for Quinnipiac who is not too shabby in his own right, Dylan St. Cyr. This one's going to be strange. You know, the fact that Perez did not play all the games, the fact that he was technically the backup when he started the season, you know, St. Cyr was supposed to be the number one. Now Perez is carrying the water. Um, and I think that if he does not win any sort of national awards, whether it be the Richter or the Hobie, I think it will mostly be because of the system in front of him. Uh, he doesn't see shots, you know, in 27 games, is a 952 save percentage, but he only made 471 shots on uh, saves. I'm going to compare that back again to Devin Levi, 885 saves in 30 games, three more games. I'll give you a hundred, you know, I'll give you a hundred more saves, but you're talking 414 more saves. Devin Levi had to make. I think that, Peretz is phenomenal, but I think the Quinnipiac defense is the greatest defense that we've ever seen in college hockey. They don't allow shots. You know, there was a point in the season where I think Peretz was, you know, putting these great numbers up, but he was averaging 16 shots on goal a game. That is, that's phenomenal. That is more the product in front of you than the goaltender. I'm not sure that every goaltender could put up those types of numbers. Um, but I do think that if your defense is that good in front of you, it will be a little bit more difficult to get the national recognition. That's where I, I think he might not get that recognition. He easily could, and he could win the Hobie. He'll have, I would say he has most of what Ryan Miller's numbers were a really good goals against much better. He's one shot out ahead of Miller, what he had, and he has a higher save percentage, but I would have to go back and look at what Ryan Miller had in terms of save numbers, the number of actual saves he had to make in the year that he won the Hobie. And I guarantee it was not anywhere near 471. I would have guaranteed it was probably somewhere near 800, 850. That's the difference in the team that's in front of you. And I think that's what makes goaltenders stand out. I'm not taking anything away from Peretz or his goaltender mate, Dylan St. Cyr. Phenomenal goaltender he was awesome at Notre Dame and he's been great when called upon at Quinnipiac but 
I think that this is a product more of the system than the player. And one defenseman among the 10 finalists, and this one was a little bit of a surprise to us, not to take anything away from the great rookie season that Luke Hughes has had in Michigan. Third of the brothers after Quinn and Jack to be a first round draft pick for the NHL. 17 goals, 19 assists, 36 points in 37 games, has eight goals in his last 10 games and skated for Team USA in the World Juniors that were abruptly cut off. And I don't know if that means he'll be able to when they start him up in May or he'll already be signed to an NHL team. Uh, New Jersey has his rights along with his brother, Quinn, who's playing for them. Um, That'll be interesting to see there. I was a little surprised with that. It was either going to be him or Owen Power, I guess, if there's going to be a defenseman from Michigan. But the voters selected Luke Hughes. Points were a little bit better. And Owen Power was certainly, he was the number one draft pick. Uh, But I I do look at, you know, Hughes kind of really brought it. You know, his goals total, I think, was a a lot of it. A little bit more in terms of points, but, you know, he did score. And I think that that's, we've always said Hobie loves goals. And I think that that's, you know, something that's kind of legitimized when you look at a guy like Luke Hughes being in there, you know, he's just been the better goal scorer. And I think that, you know, 39th in points, 41st in points per game, neither one is phenomenal. Um, But then you you kind of sit there and say, well, was it enough in terms of of a defenseman? Yes, it was. Um, I think his season was solid. And I think that that is why we're, we're seeing him being recognized. Um, But, you know, I don't think that it's going to be anything beyond this. I don't see him as a top, top three guy. He's not going to get the the hat trick, but I'm glad to see him get recognized again. Another guy that probably doesn't make it past this season. He'll probably head to the NHL um, when the season is done, but solid, you know, Solid in, in to overtake over Owen Power and what he was so highly touted. At. And listen, Owen Power is one of the best guys I've seen playing a power play this year. Luke Hughes is a talent, but I, I'd still, I'd probably take Owen Power if I was building my team today. But for the top 10, hey, he's great. Well, that's it for the Hobie finalists. The Hobie hat trick will be announced on March 31st, and the Hobie Baker Award winner will be announced on Friday, April 8th at 6 p.m. on the NHL Network and streamed on the Hobie Baker website. This podcast episode has been brought to you by DCU Digital Federal Credit Union. What will DCU mean to you? Find out today by visiting dcu.org. Membership required. For Jim Connolly, I'm Ed Trefsker, and we'll catch you next week. This has been the USCHO Spotlight, a production of U.S. College Hockey Online. Visit uscho.com slash podcasts to listen or subscribe. 